Okay, so for our next lecture, it is a uh, pelvic organ prolapse. It's pro presented by Dr. Zainal Ishak. So uh, he's from Johor. He graduated from Manipal in 1993 and pursued his master's in ONG, graduated in 2002 and uh, pursued his interest in urogynecology and successfully completed it in 2010. And he is our consultant urogynecologist at Hospital Sultan Bahia. If you will, Dr. Zainal Ishak. <coughs> Assalamualaikum and very good morning. Thank you, Dr. Ko, for the intro. intro. I'm actually from Johor, but been working in Kedah for, since 1994 when I'm joined the houseman. <laughs> okay, our topic today is a pelvic organ prolapse. So by definition, pelvic organ prolapse is one or more of the organ in the pelvis slip down from the normal position and bust into the vagina and sometimes large enough to protrude outside the vagina. It's the same like a inguinal hernia, femoral hernia, which are more common femoral hernia in women, and also umbilical hernia or incisional hernia. It's the same. So here in the in the in the obstetric gynecology, uh, we call pelvic organ prolapse. The pelvic organ normally held in the place by the ligament, muscle, known as a pelvic floor. This is the definition. So you can see the support of the vagina that according to the lengthy. So you have level one. Basically, you have a muscle, a fascia, and also tendon. So level one, as you see in the in the picture, level one consists of cardinal and uterosacral ligament. Level two, you have pubocervical fascia, anteriorly recto vaginal fascia, posteriorly liver to anai mus muscle through the tendinous vessel. You have to imagine all these things, you know. <laughs> Level 3, perineal membrane and the urogenital diaphragm. So when you have a risk factor that defect all this uh, pelvic floor, it will cause pelvic organ prolapse. <clears throat> so pelvic organ prolapse, the incident is very tip of iceberg because those who come to our clinic is a old uh, woman who is very shy they come at the stage three in the very late in presentation. Commonly occur in older women, half of the women aged 50 years old will have some symptom. One in 10 at the age of 50 years old will uh, ultimately end up with surgical intervention. It's very rare uh, pelvic organ prolapse can occur in reproductive age group. Usually it's a elongated cervix. Or in neonate, we, have, we I got one case uh, last two years. There's a pelvic organ prolapse occur in the neonate about six six months age. So what we do is to package the vagina and refer to the uh, the expertise. So in the in the post post vaginal hysterectomy also we have a prolapse, what we call vagina void prolapse. If the pelvic floor repair are not done properly and patient still not change her lifestyle. And also, uh, all right. <coughs> so the risk factor for development usually commonly is because of the childbirth complications such as big baby, instrument delivery, especially when you use a forcep for prolonged second stage of uh, second stage in labor. So you make sure the patient will be counseled regarding later after the uh, childbearing age to ensure that they are uh, do a pelvic floor muscle in order to to ensure the pelvic floor is strong enough to maintain the support of the pelvic organ. So a menopause woman, usually 51 years old, or, uh, and then also the risk factors such as obesity, uh, too, too obese, smoking, alcohol, uh, uh, developed country and also increase intra abdominal pressure such as chronic constipation because of diet is not good enough they are not taking fiber not good enough fluid intakes and also chronic smoker especially those who are uh, smoking smoking or you already have a COAD example so you have a chronic smoke plus a chronic cough will end up with pelvic organ prolapse. Also, prolonged heavy lifting. She work very hard 
uh, heavy lifting, work as factory worker, leave up a lot of heavy work, heavy subject, object, <coughs> and also it can occur in idiopathic. Idiopathic means you don't know the cause. <coughs> okay, so in the this is a pop tube, pelvic organ prolapse quanti. And now I go for the clinical staging. Ah, eh? pop tube is pelvic pelvic organ prolapse quantification. So in this diagram, you have a lot of uh, mark uh, marking. Ah, eh? in order for you to uh, measure how far the prolapse is go through. The pelvic organ prolapse is a is you have to do either at the operation or in the OT. So basically, is to measure properly how much centimeter is go beyond the enteroides. So you have anterior compartment A, A, B, A, and also your posterior compartment A, P, B, P, and also your cervix, your length of the total vaginal length, your genital hiatus, and your pubic body. This is not for uh, this is for master student, ah. Uh, okay, just glance through, nah. Uh. So when you already have your pop Q quantification, then you have to stage it. So according to you, urinary continence society, you have stage in zero to four. As you see here in the first stage, it's a normal pelvis, uh, no prolapse. Uh, the cervix is at the end of the vagina, uh, vagina. And stage two is already beyond the ischia spine but still inside the vagina. And stage three, either one centimeter above the introitus or basically your, your, your margin is hymenal ring. So one centimeter ab above the vagina, uh, the hymen uh, introitus or one centimeter below the introitus, still you stage two. Either inside one centimeter or outside one centimeter. Stage three, beyond one centimeter but the fundus still inside the the the, vagina, the vagina so stage four what we call procedential everything is going out when you see this patient in the totomy position and the clinic kesihatan or whatever you have to make sure you feel for the fundus of the uterus when you see the stage three when you see the 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 uterus is outside almost at least stage 3 or stage 4. You want to see whether this stage 3 is stage 4, you have to feel for the fundus. Usually in the menopause woman, the fundus is very, very atrophic. Uh, the uterus is very atrophic and easy for you to feel for the for the fundus of the uterus. Okay. So the clinical features, early pelvic organ prolapse may not have symptom. But review during the routine examination, example pap smear, as mentioned by the uh, Mr. Mazni just now. So, if already prolapse stage four, at the age still sixty five and below, you still need to do a pap smear. You have to wet the cervix and then you do a pap smear before you put the cervical ring. Mass in the vagina. Uh, can present with mass in vagina with sensation heaviness or dragging sensation inside the vagina associated with backache symptom improve by lying down improve because the the uh, the prolapse is already back to the pelvis sometimes may present with pelvic pelvic bleeding uh, pv bleeding from decubitus ulcer or cervix this is very common the the woman the elder woman will come because of the bleeding not because of the mass per vagina. Sometimes he come to you with bladder prolapse. You have a frequency, nocturia, incontinence sometimes, usually stress incontinence, and usually present at the emergency department as an acute urinary retention where you need to put your uh, CB, uh, CBD. Sometimes it's a bit very difficult to put it, especially when there is non-reduction of the prolapse. So this one you have, you have no choice, you have to Call the expertise, either you go to the OT and put the uh, CBD. So, bowel prolapse usually present with low back ache, associated with constipation and incomplete bowel emptying. Sometimes you need to evacuate digitally the uh, stool, which are 
inside the prolapse. Sexual function, of course, is very obvious. So the husband is going to see the prolapse is too much, then it's <laughs> going to. <laughs> okay. All right. So, this is an example of the gibbous ulcer, which are healing properly, nicely. In this type of prolapse, is at least stage 3 or 4, unless you go and palpate your, your fundus of the uterus. So, this is uh, how you examine. This is how you examine in the OT. No? So, in the POP queue, you have to measure from the introitus up to the cervix. How far? Centimeter, six centimeter, seven centimeter, whatever. But the staging still stage three. Six centimeter or five centimeter, the staging is still stage three. Okay, when you do examination of pelvic organ prolapse, you must put the patient in the retotomy position, either as an outpatient or in the OT. In the OT, of course, in the retotomy position, but in the in the clinic, usually we have a very the bed is not good enough. To, to ensure the end of the buttock is at the edge of the at the edge of the end of the, the bed. So difficult for you to put a seam speculum. You need a seam speculum to examine. Either you use seam speculum or the expert hand, you have to use two finger only. Huh? Either you obstruct the posterior vaginal uh, posterior vaginal wall and in order to to examine the anterior vaginal wall or you occlude the anterior vaginal wall to examine the posterior vaginal wall. The mid middle compartment, of course, you can see when the patient do bearing down. Sometimes you can you can't see the prolapse during the lithotomy position. As patient to straining, also nothing is coming out. So still the patient was referred because of pelvic organ prolapse. So in order not to confuse it, so we have to make sure the patient is in squatting position and try to bearing down as if she uh, have the experience of pregnant labor. So it has to uh, bearing down until you see part of the cervix is appear at the introitus. You have to ask the patient to squat halfway, like, not squat. Uh, <laughs> okay, so reveal any urinary stress incontinent, incontinent during the reduction of the uh, prolapse. Now you reduce the prolapse and you can you ask the patient to cough, and you can see the uh, the urine come out when she straight. So investigation. Routine in our clinic, usually we use urine investigation. You have to rule out UTI and also you culture the urine for the uh, organism, then you treat. So the next one is pelvic ultrasonography, and you have to rule out any abdominal mass. Usually if the pelvic floor muscle is good enough, whatever huge amount, huge pelvic mass, example ovarian tumor or adenomyces, use uterine multiple uterine fibro, it will not cause any pelvic, flow, uh, pelvic organ prolapse. But you have to rule out all these things. No? Okay, chest x-ray in the chronic cough, you have to see all the COED features. No? The mandatory investigation in pelvic organ prolapse is you have to do urodynamic test study. It must for all pelvic organ prolapse who require surgical intervention. It's a very, very medical legal. However, in our hospital Sanabaya, we don't have the machine. Even in the Department of Surgery, also we have, but uh, not working properly. So we have to refer to Pulau Pinang, Hospital Pulau Pinang, for further assessment of the urodynamic study for the pelvic organ prolapse. So hopefully, after COVID, we have money to buy the the uh, urodynamic machine. Okay. <coughs> so management basically is a changing of lifestyle. You have to reduce weight in obesity. Uh, advice for diet, good diet, high protein, uh, high protein diet, high fiber, good weight intakes. So all will, will. Uh, you don't go and do uh, in, uh, surgical intervention if you are not reduce the the, the weight of the patient. You have to give uh, sequent uh, follow up to see the reduction of the weight and you proceed with your surgical intervention. Management of chronic cough, stop smoking, uh, treatment of constipation, hydration, fiber as mentioned earlier may require laxity. Avoid heavy lifting, light duty, so you have to recommend to the employee to ensure that she do a light duty. Avoid high impact exercise. I don't know how the, the people are doing the high impact exercise. Hmm? So pelvic floor exercise is the must 
to the patient who actually have a very uh, minimal prolapse such as stage 1 or 2 you can advise for pelvic floor exercise but if you see it's already 3 or 3 uh, 2 3 and above you just put a ring pessary and also advise for pelvic floor exercise uh, by the physiotherapy usually it will, it will, be, it will not success to a grade 3 and above you you need a surgical intervention at the same time you have to put estrogen cream about 0.625 mg required apply daily for two weeks if the decubitus ulcer is present otherwise you have to give bi-weekly bi-weekly until the surgical intervention so she may require antibiotic at the same time you give or maintain your unacin and also she was supplemented by the calcium lactate and calcium to improve the muscle innervation right management for stage 2 as I mentioned uh, earlier stage 2 uh, pelvic organ prolapse all the above measure will be uh, improve your uh, prolapse for stage 2 and above may require vaginal ring pessary before surgical intervention either you do uh, vaginal hysterectomy and pelvic floor repair do those who have risk factors such as heart disease stroke etc may require permanent vaginal ring pessary change every 3 to 4 months this is the cheapest uh, ring pessary we have a uh, hundred type of pessary outside there this is a bit hard uh? you have a, uh, the soft one you can buy in the in the uh, in the pharmacy however you have to insert the vaginal ring pessary every three to four months only few patient my patient three or four my patient be inserting by herself every day so when you want to go to work you insert and at night when you go to sleep you hang it you put inside the uh, chlorhexidine watch, uh, watch uh, chemical and then tomorrow morning you reuse again every day a very very motivated patient only three or four so this is how you put your ring pessary nah, at the funders and also at the sympathies base. <coughs> all right when you put the, uh, the ring pessary Sometimes the patient will complain urinary stress incontinent. Nah? Okay, management. Lastly, is a surgical intervention. So basically, three and above, you put the vaginal ring pessary to ensure that she don't have any decubitus ulcer later on. Or the she had decubitus ulcer, you treat with the primarine pessary. Then you subject patient for vaginal hysterectomy and pelvic floor repair, including McCall cardioplasty. You have to do McCall cardioplasty. You don't know how to do McCall cardioplasty, you better refer to the person who expert in doing the McCall cardioplasty. May require subuterus sling, uh, example mesh, if the urodynamic study reveals evidence of urine distress incontinent during the primary surgery. So you do your vaginal hysterectomy, pelvic floor repair, macular cardioplasty and later after you close everything you go ahead and do your sub urethral sling TVDO or inside out, outside out is a lot of various of the sub urethral sling for vaginal wall prolapse may require either copoclysis is a very very fantastic half an hour job but to, you have to make sure that the patient is sexually active or not if not sexually active uh, example uh, 60, 70 and above in our 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 culture usually is not really active, no? Okay, in our in European country, 60, 70 is still sexually active. Then you have to ensure the modality of surgical intervention either by sacrocopopexy. It take about one or two hours, depend on the size of the patient. Is obese and very difficult, and cut up to three hours. Sacrospinal fixation you have to catch the spinal sacrospinal ligament and attach with the bolt of the, the prolapse for the elongated cervix manchester in the reproductive age group you just amputate the uh, cervix and you will uh, just there's a way of the amputation of cervix no? you definitely after two weeks or after one month you can see the cervix is going up no? after elongated cervix repair all right thank you Am I too fast? <laughs> Any question? Uh, uh, I have a question. 
not me, Nurul Abdul Mana. Will the vaginal pessary disturb sexual activities of the patient? Uh, of course, definitely will disturb uh, sexual activity, especially in the reproductive age group. So in that case, you have to suggest patient for uh, surgical intervention or uh, any other uh, any other modality of vaginal ring pessary if she not agree for the surgical intervention. Then you have to go in through the lot of uh, vaginal uh, type of vaginal ring pessary. <coughs> okay, Dr. Zainal. Uh, any more questions? Okay, second, second question, Dr. Zainal, from Putri Suraya. Hi, doctor. I want to ask, in patient with POP who refuse for surgical intervention and only on pelvic floor exercise, how frequent we should review the patient? Uh, if uh, if the patient on the pelvic uh, bring pessary, usually you review three to four four months. As I mentioned just now, only if you have you have to motivate patient to use daily. But in this type of uh, vaginal pessary, we are offered usually very hard, and then sometimes the old lady quite nervous to insert by herself. You know? so you have to ensure three to four months. If there is a discharge, then you have to. Ensure not to put any ring pessary. You take a swab and you treat, and then after after two weeks, you come back and then put back the vaginal ring pessary. This patient usually refuse for or any risk of uh, medical problem, comorbid. <coughs> okay, 